What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Kenny. We're back with another edition of Conversations with Kenny, where we sit down with interesting people from all around the world, get to know them a little bit better. And I have a familiar face. You may know him as Shane Thorne from NXT or Mm -hmm. behind the mask Slapjack over on Retribution. But he is Shane Hayes. What's going on, Shane? How are you? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. You know, I told fans that I was going to sit down and have a conversation with you. So they were really excited to uh, throw some questions out there and find out a little bit more about you. Uh, Pick your brain a little bit when it comes to wrestling and how you were feeling in the 90 days that you were uh, sitting at home or getting yourself prepared. Yeah, yeah, you know, getting yourself prepared for you know to get back into the uh, into the wrestling scene. Uh, but one of the questions, one of the things that I want to uh, start off with uh, is uh, a big congratulations. You taking that leap in there, going into the uh, marriage world now? Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I was checking the background. We've got the wedding binder book there. Um, my fiance Kimmy <laughs> is doing all pretty much all the uh, organizing and whatnot, and we found. A good group was it called Wedgewood Weddings. Very uh-huh. easy. Shout out to them, I guess. Uh, making the job very easy for us. Oh man, um, you we still you, got a, we got a year and a bit though. <laughs> uh, just because we didn't know how this year was going to plan it out, uh, plan right. out with the pandemic and whatnot, and traveling because obviously a lot of my family is in Australia. Um, mm-hmm. It seems like the board when we first started planning. The borders were still closed, but now everything seems to be good to go. But it's good to give people who are going to make an international travel a bit of a heads up. So they've got a year and a bit heads up. So it should be right. Oh, man. I've been married now for 10 years. And I can tell you that. Congratulations. The one, thank you. The one, the one thing I did not like was the wedding planning. Yeah, no, this is all the, like we've got an all inclusive venue uh-huh. that does like the open bar, uh-huh. buffet catering. So you're really just like paying per head and then the little trims and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so for me, for me, it's going very easily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I'm, I'm waiting for her to come to you and say, like, babe, I, I'm trying to pick a wedding dress. I don't know. And she's going to be like, you know, like, where are you going now? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to another <laughs> shop. Or yeah. She's going to text you to ask you your opinion, but never show you the dress. Yeah, that that's I. Don't look forward to that. The uh, bridesmaid color scheme and whatnot, and she's like, "What uh-huh. do you want? To, what, what do you want the groom groomsman to wear?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Whatever they're wearing on the day." Like, I was like, "We'll get some uh, <laughs> get some of them tuxedo t-shirts. Cut the sleeves off uh-huh. of them. Get them in large and extra large. So whoever whoever needs if, if a guy can't make it, we we'll just uh-huh. throw it on someone else." Oh my god! You <laughs> know what? I, I, I tried. <laughs> I tried that, and my wife looked at me. With this serious face, and she was like, "You better not do this shit today. Like, get it together, be because no, I'm a I'm more of a comedic guy. Like, I like to just yeah. like clown around. So I told her, I was like, oh, we can come in jeans and t-shirts, and I'll just wear yeah, a jacket we'll and be like, you know, we're good to go.' And she was just like, "Don't be an asshole. Like, <laughs> take <laughs> take this serious. I don't want to take the spotlight off of you, babe. So we'll exactly. dress down. I I, just, I really just said like, you pick it, whatever you want, and we'll make it work." Like whatever, oh my God. Like, but then so, that, you got to put more effort in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God! So you it's you already you already have a stressful job in being a you know a, a pro wrestler, and now you're throwing the the like the wedding mixture in there. So like, how are you dealing with like all the stress? Um, I don't have any stress, man. It's not that hard mm. being a pro wrestler. You know what I mean? When you're as good as I am at it, uh-huh. it's pretty fucking easy. Uh, <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> The, the wedding stuff's all like a lot. Like, we've already got the venue, the date, uh, mm-hmm. the food, the alcohol sorted. Um, yeah, a lot of it's already sorted itself out, and we've still got another mm-hmm. year and a bit. Like, it's not till next year that we're doing it, um, mid next year. So, it's all like a lot of the stuff I don't need to figure out until later. Mm-hmm. And wrestling seems to be all falling into place at the moment for me. So, yeah, shit's good, man. Easy. You 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 almost swerved us before when you when you first left WWE when you left WWE and said you were gonna retire and I, I remember seeing yeah. that post and I was just like wait a minute he made a video he's gonna retire like are you, are you serious like actually it, the wording of that had nothing it said I coming out of retirement I never okay. said I was retiring okay so I had, I, had my, I had that mixed up so you were you yeah. were coming out of retirement and 
a lot I was, of I was you know being when I looked at uh-huh. facetious with my words. So right. yes, I, I confused a lot of people. But no, it was just a joke of coming out of retirement and back into the world of pro wrestling. Um, WWE is more of a television show Mm -hmm. um, where a lot more of it is produced and acted and whatnot. Um, There there is still a fair bit of pro wrestling on there. A lot of, Mm -hmm. I I didn't get to do a lot of it, but like a lot of people, there are, there are characters like that, but a lot of it is highly produced television. So how stressful was that? Did you, I know you, you love pro wrestling. You said it, you know, many yeah. times before, and that's, you know, a lot of guys that who are really passionate about, you know, this business, that's all they want to mm-hmm. do. They want to go out there. They want to entertain the fans. And yeah. I know it had to be frustrating to be, you know, one of those people who like sits in the back and it's like not getting used at, you know, like the way they want to, like, yeah. Would you go to creative and say like, "Hey, I have a really good idea that you can use"? And yeah, I threw everything at them. Like it was mm-hmm. frustrating in the beginning too. In NXT, like there were frustrations of mm-hmm. you get hired for they see you and mm-hmm. the, your abilities and things like that, and then you get signed and immediately they start trying to change you. This isn't right. for every, not everyone, but my experience. They like don't do this, don't be like that. Um, this and that. And so NXT was heavily like they wanted their own product of person. Mm-hmm. Um, on the main roster, I got a lot more freedom in my in the actual in ring wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they just wanted, especially when I was doing like main events and stuff like that. Even even on Raw, the Slapjack, like I could do whatever moves I wanted. And they didn't, mm-hmm. as long as we did it within the time frame. And then they cared more about the front end and the back end. The stuff in the middle, they're like that doesn't matter. It's right. the story, the overall story that we tell. Um, so as long as that stuff got hit, um, they didn't really mind what you did uh, between the matches. Um, as far as like, yeah, creative stuff, like I pitched, even stuff I didn't want to do, I pitched. Right. Um, anytime I saw a, a hole of something, like when uh, Danielson left, I'm like, well, there's, there's a hole there for just a pure wrestler. Like obviously mm-hmm. not on the level that he left at, but like, we know that that character and that story works. So I'm like, film me in that as someone, a, a younger, uh, <laughs> newer version of someone who's trying to break into it that way, put me with Cesaro and uh, those guys and like let them mentor me uh, up to a point where then hopefully I can take over that role of being uh, um, just the wrestler wrestler mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. Well- what what was the feeling for you like when they presented to you with the whole retribution, um, like story angle, and then they wanted to change your name again, and then this time put you behind a mask? Well, all of that came in stages. None of that was ever presented as mm-hmm. a whole. Um, I don't as far as story goes. I think that was all week by week. Right. Um, when they started, like we had nothing to do with the original retribution stuff. Um, but then, like seeing it, it was pretty cool. Like it was trashing stuff and fucking flipping mm-hmm. cars and Molotovs. It was all different stuff, and like I love that about uh, with the production value of WWE is that you can do these movie like stories, these television show right. things with all these this production and whatnot. And I'm like, this is cool. This is different. This is next level. Like during the pandemic, they did uh, a lot of the movie style matches and i'm like this is different like people will remember these and look back at them and be going, like that's something cool and different um the retribution stuff watching that as it began was like this is cool this is different um we just like it'd be cool if they had people doing it like i don't know who did the first few weeks they did it um like the chainsawing the ropes and stuff like that i don't yeah. i don't think any of that was wrestlers that was just production people or i don't know stunt people i don't know yeah. i don't I, I still don't know but when they said they needed people to take over those roles so when they can show the faces, of, they can have a face to it, I was like, mm-hmm. hell yeah. Like, I was definitely down for that. It also meant a proper move to the main roster, which is I was doing nothing in NXT for years. So I was like, oh, I was, I was dying to get out of there and onto the main roster. Um, so, yeah, I was very excited to do that. Um, we had – I don't know if they'd already had the idea of masks. I think they may have. Mm-hmm. But um, we like Dijak did a lot of the a, a lot of pitching for us 
um, at that point, even not to do with retribution. Um, it was just, we weren't getting used. And like, we, he knew that I think they wanted to put me and Dijak as a tag team anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And so we had a few other guys who we knew weren't getting used. And we're like, let's try to do a group thing, um, which he'd pitched mask stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But we were thinking more. Are we back? We're good? Yeah, nope. yeah, yeah. We, lo- we lost you there for a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, what was the last thing I was saying? So you took them out. Um, yeah, you took them out of the masks. Yeah, we we sent in our own designs and whatnot, and we were thinking, like, just entrance masks. And then they, you get them, you take them off. And then the masks they came to us with um, were very different. They were made by the same guy who made uh, Bray Wyatt's mask, so they were okay. very good. They were very good quality. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they asked us like we put them on we went and saw vince and he loved them he Mm -hmm. loved them he he thought they were cool so if the boss thinks they're cool i think they're cool i'm like Mm -hmm. yep it's fine like if he thinks it's cool then it's gonna get a push and if something gets a push eventually people will like it or you get fucking a buttload of money Mm -hmm. um (laughs) so it was just there's a little bit of like i just couldn't see too well from the sides and mm-hmm. he said, like, yeah, any modifications or alter- alternations you guys want to make, like, let us know. So I, like, pitched to the guy uh, to make it a little easier to see um, the a little less of the holes in it. And, like, I wanted yeah. the ones at the bottom because it's a fucking smiley face at the bottom. I was like, what if it went downwards, like a Casey Jones-like mask? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll take that all into consideration. Two weeks later, they're like, yeah, we got the new fitted masks and it was the exact same thing that i got back yeah. like yeah it was like they're you like, listen to the damn thing i said yeah it's like i asked them like what did what did they think like, no nah, they liked it the way it was so that's right. what you got they trimmed the side a like a little bit right but they were still like wrestling in blinders and then with the straps on the back like there was just one strap and he added more straps but how tight it was it pressed and held against my jaw Ooh. so i couldn't actually open my mouth uh-huh. Uh, resting in it, so a lot of it was breathing through my just my nose. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, fucking, that had to be difficult, especially with your style of rough. wrestling. Definitely, um, and then like the weight of it kind of pulls your face down as uh-huh. well. So yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing, but I figured because it was a new character and a new like mm-hmm. personality in that, I'm like, I'll change the style that I wrestle. I'll do less mm-hmm. of a high fly flippy style which i didn't really do that much at the time anyway um and be a little bit more grounded and try work on the character stuff right um yeah but then i, I we noticed that they like they would take away members because i don't know like mercedes martinez was was a part of the group at one point and then she kind of left and it well, that was like her Chelsea... choice. she just didn't want to okay. do it she, and then i think was... like chelsea green was was also a part of it and then she never I mean, no, I, they, 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 I thought I thought she was because it looked like no. there was unless it was probably one of the production people that just as they were they were extra there just breaking the chains. But no. it, we did, it just felt kind of weird, uh, you know, when we when we saw it, it was just like okay, this is a good concept, and like week by week it started to uh, develop, and then you guys got Mustafa Ali involved, and uh, yeah, there's a, there was a few like everything on the fly kind of changed. Like yeah, Chelsea wasn't one. I think Lacey Lane was. If you ever look at the the first one, um, I think Lacey Lane is one of the ones up there, mm-hmm. which they told us two girls and three guys. Uh-huh. Um, so the five of us. But then they had three girls there. And I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, you said two girls. And I'm like, which one? And so I guess they trimmed. They were like, they saw it up and went, whoops. But we had all the extras there as well. Being, um, okay. we, we called them the putty patrol. As a Power Rangers <laughs> reference. That's a good and reference. Then, and then as COVID kind of got a little wilder, we lost all. We WWE yeah. stopped having extras. So and that's the same time like uh, that Raw Underground disappeared mm-hmm. because they couldn't yeah. have all the extras, which I think that hindered what Retribution was meant to be as well. Yeah. Like we were meant to be a mob ganging up on people. And as soon as we lost our putty patrol, they like, frantically went for something else uh, and changed it week by week. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't think Ali knew he was going to be the leader until, or even a part of it until mm-hmm. that week. Um, we didn't know until that day. Like, a lot oh, of these wow. things, 
we didn't know until the day of right. um, the name change thing. Um, that's a lot of people get their names changed when they go to the main roster, but it's usually mm-hmm. like we were just going to, we, we were pitching Thorn, Dio and Dijak, mm-hmm. like just go our last names. Like that's fine. Right. And it was because we, we kind of knew who was underneath the mask when, when you like when you see it, especially the way yeah. a lot of the, the mask was already uh, designed. It was like, wait a minute. Well, That's we did a again, promo like, telling people who we were. Right. There was a, there's a I swear it was on an episode. Um, yeah, no, we all have a little. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And it shows who we were. And we're right. saying like we were these people and now we're something else or whatever the fuck the story of line was that yeah it was, it was crazy because when we first when we saw it we was just like okay we know who's underneath the mask and then you guys cut the promo and like basically said like who you were before yeah. who you are now it was like okay i know a lot of the names wasn't the best no when it came to when it came to this and then it was just like especially with yours and i was like well that's shane thorne like i i yeah and then you say your name and they're like wait a minute slapjack and like Really, like but that was the thing. Like uh, Ali was smart in the way, like the he did a promo, and it's just hard if you're not. Um, everyone complains that, like you know, on Raw and SmackDown, we see the same matches over mm-hmm. and over and over again. But if you don't do things over and over and over again, it doesn't sink in. Like a lot of mm-hmm. the things that people still comment to me about it all, I'm like, we answered all these things. Like people, are like, right. why are you trying to pretend you're someone else? And we're like, we're not. We said this, and the thing with the names and Ali did this, uh, added this to a promo on his own, was how he got ridiculed for his name. And so Mm -hmm. he gave us names that would get us ridiculed so that to prove a point that people are going to make fun and talk down to people who are in the right but uh, make fun of them for their name and judge them for their name. So that's kind of like, that was I thought that was a genius way of doing it. But because we did it in one promo, it doesn't, people forget about it. Um, but then, yeah, we were like, okay, so this, they let us, they let him do that in a promo uh-huh. and we're like, okay, hopefully they'll see like the point of it. And then they'll change our names back. And like, right. we can go to this part and then strip back to being more of a, just a heel version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it never happened. <laughs> they did make some pretty us. cool toys though from, uh, for, from Mattel, but we didn't, did they? We didn't, yeah, we didn't see, did they? we didn't see yours fucking... though. They put you in a video game. Yeah, but that's not Mattel. Mattel, yeah. I don't, I don't know what I did wrong to Mattel, yeah. but for fucking five years they've uh-huh. been just like pushing me off to the side. Did they scan the video you game for people? The... Good. Uh-huh. They're fucking they, great. Did people. they scan you? Did they scan your face, your likeness for uh, for um, a figure? I had maybe back in 2016. I right. think I did the I did the head scan thing uh-huh. in for Mattel in 2016. And then being ignored ever since then. So that's yeah, you know, up to the boys I, I, over in Mattel. In another interview, <laughs> I, I thought it was Ringside Collectibles that did these, and I yeah. have to apologize to them. <laughs> that's my bad. I thought it was you guys. I just see a lot of your stuff, right. but Mattel. If I see you on the street, Mattel, I'm swinging fists. <laughs> you heard it here first, Steve. I don't. Want, I don't want one of your fucking crappy toys anyway. <laughs> I'll make my own toys and then we'll fucking be bigger and and then I'll put you out of business. How do you like that, Mattel? There you go. I'll make the the new Barbie. Do they make Barbie? (laughs) Yes, they do. Yeah, fucking Barbie's dumb anyway. You're dumb. (laughs) Who makes the Ninja Turtles ones? Hasbro? Uh, NECA. So there's a couple of companies. Yeah, like Super 7 and NECA. They both make uh, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, well, they're better. Everyone well, go Super by, Seven, everyone yeah, go Super by. Seven did uh, Matt Cardona and uh, Brian Myers and the Good yeah. Brothers, so they're they're Good. getting into the wrestling business Excellent. when it comes Good. to the figures, and they well, did some the New best. Japan stuff as well. So they're the best ones out there. Best toys ever made were made by that one that you just said. Ne- there you Neca, go. Neca. Neca, Neca. Uh, Super Seven. Super Seven. Yes, yep. they're super, and then seven of my hearts. Uh, so your 90 days is up. You've been a really busy man. We've seen you in New Japan. Yeah. Strong. So how, how is that going? Love it, man. I absolutely love that environment, the crowd, the vibe, the everything, man. I love um, the style. And I can't, I can't wait to get back to Japan. Hopefully that's in the cards later this year. I don't know yet how that's 
the country's going with uh, right. opening back up and whatnot. But I do see a lot of guys going back over at the moment and uh, hopefully they'll open it up to new people sooner rather than later because, man, it's just so much better <laughs> to be a wrestler again. Um, you know, you get you find out what your match is, you go out there and mm-hmm. fucking do it. And then when you come back through the curtain, you're not getting told what you did wrong and berated yeah. on why didn't you walk faster or lift up more or look at the camera this way? People were just like, that was cool, man. Like, yeah, the crowd like it. Yeah, fuck, that's all that matters. Like, exactly. Yeah. Sick. I love it. Are, are we going to see you team up with Jonah a lot more? You see us team up in Chicago. Chicago uh-huh. fucking riot. Um, yep. That We got that, hopefully. Uh, hopefully me and Mikey rekindle mm-hmm. it there. Um, I'm a big fan of tag wrestling, so mm-hmm. I'm not limiting myself to just those guys. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, and companies in America. So, you know, if you're out there and you need a tag partner, I'm a pretty fucking experienced tag guy. So, got a couple of titles, you know? Can't, yeah, a couple don't of want titles. To brag too much. A couple of awards, you know? you know? Not to toot my own horn, but toot toot. Uh, can can you uh, are you trying to make it to um, back to Australia to to wrestle there as well? Uh, I would love to go back to Australia. Uh-huh. I meant to go earlier this year, but um, the Perth borders didn't open back up. They're open now. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely want to get back to EPW Perth. Uh, Jesse Lambert's been talking shit, and uh, I want to crack his skull open. He's a fucking yeah. terrible wrestler. Um, he's a good kid. He's funny, uh-huh. but he's a fucking shit wrestler. And he keeps fucking nipping at me. So, yeah, I'll put him in his place. He he just wants you to make him a star. That's pretty much it. I know, he does. And I'll, like, it's not going to happen. So he can keep chirping away, but chirp, chirp, little birdie. I'm a cat. You know know what's going to happen, right? He's going to find out where your wedding is. And he's going to crash the wedding. He can't afford to come to America. (laughs) I don't think fucking McDonald's pays him enough to come over. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, like even the, uh-huh. east, coast, the east coast of uh, Australia now, PWA, uh, MCW stuff like that, man. I see their shows and they're fucking awesome too. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to get out there and uh, wrestle with some of the newer talent there. Like I haven't been back there. I haven't wrestled in Australia for maybe ten years, mm-hmm. especially the east coast. Um, so yeah. Very keen to see the new talent out there and see how, because uh, I know Australian wrestlers are so well trained. Right. Uh, from the oldest guys to the newest guys, I, I know that I can go there and if they want me to wrestle anybody, I know I can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no worries in my mind that it'll be I'll be able to put on a good match with them. Okay. Do yeah. you want to just continue wrestling in the indies for a good while before just locking in? Before like signing with a company, no, <laughs> I see a lot of independence companies here, and like uh-huh. it's just funny, man. Like independence, mm-hmm. <laughs> independent companies, and they got like I see like and I get a little bit of FOMO because I see these people getting booked for them, and I'm like, why are these people booking me? Mm-hmm. Um, and I see their posters, and they're really cool and shit. And then I see the mm-hmm. shows, and I'm like, oh, they're pretty fucking stingy. And you know what? And if, if any promoter out there takes offense to that, book me for your show and fucking prove me wrong. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I like, I like, I love seeing mm-hmm. all the new talent out there and shit like that and mm-hmm. people pushing themselves. Um, so I don't really care who it is, who it's for, but I do want to wrestle new people like homegrown talent. Um, mm-hmm. From these companies because like everyone's going to start making a name for themselves somewhere mm-hmm. and like I, don't know, I just see how much effort and excitement that's something that's been lacking for me for the last few years is mm-hmm. that excitement to be creative and people are being so creative these days and i want to get back into the mix of that so yeah i do i do want to yeah i want to experiment i want to see and taste it all man like i want to travel and wrestle for anybody anybody who's willing to book me and you know sort it all out uh, i want to work and i want to get in there with everyone 
to um, all, everybody who's watching this right now. They need to yeah. start getting on the horn. Do man, send and those like, emails. I see those. Oh, there's a bunch of companies now that run out of uh, like breweries and stuff like uh-huh. that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big brewery guy. So you know, any any promotions out there that run out of brewery, I will work my match for free as long as you pay for my tab and my transportation. <laughs> There you go. Because, you know, no drink driving, guys. Come yeah, on. Let's yeah, not yeah. Be you got to get those Ubers out there. That's what yeah. the Uber drivers are there for. But I will drink a lot and probably take a growler to go home, uh-huh. you know. So, mm, match fee, bar tab. <laughs> it's a gamble. Yeah, yeah you, you got to get, get what you can get at this point. I love it, man. People being so creative of where they mm. run shows. It's so good. I love it, man. Cool. Oh, my God. So, we're, we're nearing the end. Mm-hmm. of the uh the interview here but we do have a little segment called before you go a couple of yeah. rapid fire questions you can answer whatever comes to mind at first and you just mm-hmm. go and just let us know first thing that comes to mind are you ready let's try it okay worst travel experience uh there was uh with nxt i think we did some really low budget airlines and i remember there was one that had the f- one of the seats was right up against the the middle toilet part mm-hmm. like why would you like they sold this seat and put it there <laughs> and i'm like the fuck is wrong with you like and someone had that seat uh-huh. uh, i guess it wasn't the worst for me but man that was a pretty fucking awful flight a huge turbulence shit like that yeah that was pretty fucking rough and just like having like these seats where your uh-huh. legs are around your head yeah pretty bad yeah no, that is bad Oh my mm-hmm. god! Uh, if you wasn't a wrestler, what would you be doing? Uh, probably construction. Uh, Australia is a very labor-driven um, country. I mm-hmm. used to install uh, filing cabinets and shit like that for mm-hmm. Dexian back in Perth. Shout out to Dexian! And I actually like enjoyed it, man. Like I'd go to different. Every day was a different job site, a different place, and you just smash it up go home don't have to worry about shit um I, i'd like to do acting and stuff like that mm-hmm. but i like realistically uh i'd probably be in construction okay. or firefighter i wouldn't mind being a firefighter yeah, there you go. that's a pretty cool shit i guess one of my stuff. kids wants to be yeah it's a good like you know they're the heroes man <laughs> people love firefighters <laughs> there you go that's true. They, like, yeah they get they get like uh one of the other guys who worked in installations was mm-hmm. also a firefighter mm-hmm. but on his off days he'd come do subcontracting stuff and he'd tell me like you know like part of their day was to work out and then you know just get their stuff ready work out eat stuff like that is all part of the job I'm like that sounds great favorite yeah. career moment um i'd probably say the second time winning the ghc heavyweight titles the first time was um great it was a good story moment and like we beat the new japan guys who had it um bled buckets and i mean the first time but the second time was against uh we won them from sagira and tanaka who we'd wrestled like five three times three or four times before that and lost every time and then so this was the finally overcoming them and like it felt really earned and i just like this i see photos of it and i still remember the feeling of like accomplishment from that okay i know you're a fit guy i know you you know you want to be you know stay in shape yeah for uh, for pro wrestling but what is your go-to snack oh shit man that's like i used to eat like shit like i had such good i used to 30s 30s the kind of like that sat downhill um everyone will tell you like back in japan and shit man i used to eat uh pancakes donuts like i could smash a uh, 12 uh what do you call them crispy cream donuts in a couple mm-hmm. of minutes um desserts i'm a desserts guy i'm a bit healthier of an eater now and i don't really snack um mm-hmm. i try to eat far cleaner it's just easier but um actually junk food is pretty easy but yeah fuck donuts i love donuts man pancakes i've always been a pancake guy too but uh for snacking yeah, donuts is good. I'm trying to think of what else. Ice cream. I love to snack on ice cream. That okay. shit's good. Moose Tracks ice cream. I miss the shit out of that. Here in Cali, we don't get it. Mm-hmm. Not that I've seen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if anyone 
in around LA, Cali area knows where to find Moose Tracks ice cream, mm-hmm. fucking tell me now. Definitely. Uh, last question. Mm-hmm. Uh, when are you your happiest? Uh, I'm pretty fucking happy when I'm at home with my dogs and my fiance. Mm-hmm. Um, watching a good TV show, like really getting into a series or something like that when I've got the, the puppies snuggled up and, um, yeah, and I'm with my girl. Uh, being in the ring is pretty good, especially after a match that you know has just gone well. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a feeling that's coming back to me now, especially like uh, we just had New Japan in Tampa and Fuck, I had so much fun, man. And, like, to come back through the curtain and not be berated or told mm. what you did wrong and shit and just to be able to enjoy the moment that you had. Right. And, like, we didn't – we were hanging out there for 10 minutes at most and we just brawled and did shit. But, like, it was fulfilling. It felt good, man. I love I love that, the stress-free wrestling, which, I mean, like, I say the same thing. I love training. I love right. being at training and wrestling. That's another thing. Like, no one's – come to me i haven't had any office to do seminars and whatnot mm-hmm. um i love training i love helping people i'm a very hands-on in the ring trainer mm-hmm. um and so like yeah do, um, people reach out for me to do that man I, i'm very cheap with that because uh, i love training and getting in there with people and rolling around and being able to wrestle without any stress like uh, before the shows on Smackdown Raw because I was fucking never booked. Mm-hmm. I'd be in the ring just rolling around and bumping and anyone who wanted to try something new or like you were down work to do it. I was down and I'd like, yeah, bump. I don't fucking care, man. I love to. Um, I trained the moment out of uh, MPW with Ray Rosa and mm-hmm. there's a bunch of like hungry people there. And, and before I even think of new creative things for myself, I like see their stuff and I'm like, oh, that would really work well with them. And I get right. excited there. That makes, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I think about myself. I'm going to be greedy. <laughs> exactly. But that's just not how I work. And I just, yeah, that makes, I love training. I love stress free wrestling. It's fucking awesome. Well, Shane, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time out and speaking with me yeah, here, on, yeah, you know, you. here on the show. Uh, where can we catch you next? Uh, I think we got uh, the Vermont. In LA, in mm-hmm. what 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 day is it? Fucking March. April, right now, May. see, is it? It's March twenty third right now. And then what's next month? April. April. Yep. April. April tenth, I believe. Fuck, I'm good at these promos. <laughs> <laughs> Look up the website. Look up New Japan Strong. You fucking right. see it. Do your own research. What am I? Can Google? We got it. You got anything for uh, for Dallas? No, I don't. I'm free Dallas. If anyone wants okay. to hang out, man, like. But also too, man, like I don't get stressed out of if I don't mm. have a booking on a weekend and shit like that. Because right. I, I know like especially Mania weekend mm. can be hectic as shit. So if I miss it, I'm like, Meh, I'll fucking play Elden Ring some more and right. hang out with my missus and my doggies. <whistles> Come here. Huh? They're terrible. They're asleep. Whatever. <laughs> I don't even know what the other one is. They're terribly trained. <laughs> no, oh my God. Great. sounds like my kids. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I don't know. I got weekends free, so mm-hmm. I'm keen to work and wrestle. If I pop up somewhere, that's great. But yeah, the next one is the Vermont, LA for New Japan Strong, and then we have the Chicago show later that month, April, mm-hmm. and that's going to be fucking sick. Nice. Street fight, Chicago street oh. fight. Yeah. That should be yes, that that would definitely be a good one. Oh yeah, baby. That's gonna be sick. Well, Shane, like I'm gonna let you go. Yeah, thank thanks you so much. Me, you have a good one. You too, man. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. All right. One.